Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show Hello, welcome to the Eunice Molat Show. I'm your host, Eunice Molat. We have an exciting program lined up for you today. We have a guest by the name of Idem Kege. Idem Kege is a vocalist, drummer, and dancer. At the tender age of 15, Idem established a musical sound that was not only unique, but expressed her soul's expression of music. And we have with us here Idem. Welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, who is this amazing and talented artist named Adam? Well, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty much, um, like you said, when I was 15, um, I definitely wanted to become a solo musician and um, really just do what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do covers. I wanted to do my own music. But um, last year, I want to say, is when I really started um, uh, identifying what my actual sound was yes. when it came down to the instruments that I played. And so mm -hmm. I, I would say it's about a year now that I've that you've really? taken it very serious, seriously. Definitely. Wow. Prior to that, from a young age, did you have an expression apart from music, or was just were you just drawn to music itself? Um, I was just drawn to music. Mm -hmm. um, it started when I was uh, in third grade. I played the violin, and so since then, I had just had music flowing through me. It's mm -hmm. um, I come from a very musical type family, you know, mu from music always being on to other relatives playing instruments or even singing mm -hmm. and participating in um, church choirs and things themselves. Yeah. So, so what m um, musical instruments did you pick up and stuff? Um, third grade until my senior year in high school, I played the violin. Um, my senior year in high school, I picked up the alto sax. Um, from, I want to say like my freshman year to now, a little bit of piano, guitar. Mm -hmm. um, last year, I picked up the djembes and the ukulele. Wow. Um, and I attempted to start playing the sitar, but I don't have a sitar anymore to play. What's a sitar? So it's, an, it's an Indian instrument. It's uh -huh. this long, it's really big. Yeah. It's a really big instrument, and it's got like this rounded back. Um, it has about, I believe, seven to nine strings on the front and metal rings. Um, and you have this like little metal pick, and you, you bend. You, it's a weird instrument, but you bend the notes, and uh -huh. so it gets this kind of, um, I don't know, I, Asian, Middle Eastern type mm -hmm. sound. Yes. It's a beautiful instrument. Wow, that's amazing. So you brought some instruments here for us. Could you tell yes. us about them? Um, I have this here. Uh -huh. This is the ukulele. Um, it consists of four strings. Um, I like it m over, I like it more than the guitar only because, I don't know, it's smaller, it's more personal. Um, and there's not such a huge neck to go up and down when it comes to the strings. Uh -huh. I, I'm a short person. I have short arms. I'm not trying to do too much. <laughs> <laughs> and so this gives me that leisure of just uh -huh. yeah. being able to um, use the space that I'm given, which isn't too much. Yes. How long have you been playing this specific ukulele? I've been playing this since last October. Wow. So several months now. Mm -hmm. And I've just been really... Um, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Um, I believe that you never finish learning anything. Um, but I definitely, I definitely have been diligent when it comes to playing the ukulele. Um, yeah. I mean, when I first got it, I was literally taking this thing to bed, laying on my back and uh -huh. just playing. And so, oh, wow. it's, yeah, I definitely That's just been persistent. Oh, yes. And then here, uh -huh. I have two djembes. Uh-huh. And um, this one has been beaten, like, uh, I can't even describe. <laughs> if you can see the head on this one, there's literally no more of a, of a goat skin head on it anymore. This is actually a beginning um, djembe because it's tuned only once, meaning because of this black strap around it, yeah. um, what it's tuned to is uh -huh. what it will always be tuned to. Oh. I can't change it. This is what it's always going to be. Um, so there are drums that you can actually adjust the sound on? Yes, and that's really? actually what I'm going to show you on my next drum. This is a synthetic drum because it's not made of wood. Yeah. 
um, the head is also not um, all skin. Okay. It's plastic like you see here. But I call this my African, even though they're both African drums, I call this one my African drum because it... It has that sound to it. It makes yeah. you shoulders start moving definitely. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. And then this one is another djembe, but this is a wooden djembe. This is more towards the traditional ones, although this one is a lot smaller than most of the traditional ones. Okay. Um, this one is a wooden djembe. Mm -hmm. This is a real djembe. It's mm -hmm. made out of wood. Mm -hmm. There's a... Um, there's many different types of skins, the um, goat skins, mm -hmm. um, but that's one that I have on top here for this drum. Mm -hmm. And this one is tunable. Mm -hmm. With all these strings that are wrapped around here, just like this, mm -hmm. um, I personally haven't messed around with it. Like I said, I've only been playing this for a year. Wow. I haven't want to, I don't want to mess with it because <laughs> I don't want to ruin the sound that I have already. Yes. But by adjusting um, the strings around here, uh -huh. which leads to the strings around here, mm -hmm. which leads to the strings up here, this tightens and loosens the head on the drum, mm -hmm. making it a higher pitch if it's tightened mm -hmm. or a lower pitch if it's loosened. Oh. And this is my... Very nice. I don't know, I call this one my Middle Eastern drum because it sounds kind of Middle Eastern. I don't know. <laughs> very good, very yeah. good. Yes, now, you were originally born in Maryland in 1991, correct? Yes. So when did you come to the Midwest and what brought you here? Um, I came here when I was about 11, 12 years old um, and it was after um, my father passed. Um, it was kind of like one of those, I don't know, my mom, we, we lived there a little bit after my dad passed too, but mm -hmm. um, she was just really praying and praying and praying about where to go next and mm -hmm. um, one day she's like, God told us we're going to Nebraska and I was like, what is in Nebraska? <laughs> like seriously, that was my question. I'm like, what is in Nebraska? It's like the land of corn. Right. right? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought, you know, and I, I was I was a child, mm -hmm. so I had that bias there yeah. and then I've never been to the Midwest, so yeah. I had that bias there and I was just like, does everyone ride tractors and horses? Yeah, like, this exactly. is ridiculous. There's no know? culture here, right? right? There's <laughs> nothing. I didn't even think, honestly, I didn't think that any uh, people of color existed here either. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that there were any Hispanic people, any black people, anything like that. I know. That. It's considered the state of like <laughs> Republicans and stuff. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. So who wants to go there? <laughs> Definitely. But then, you know, I came over here and I was like, wow, there's actually all types of people. Yeah. There's actually roads. People drive cars. It's mm -hmm. actually pretty normal. It's not like, you know, what it you know I thought it was gonna be like yeah, yeah. And so mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh very good <laughs> so when you came here and stuff like that were there environments that you were able to express your talents in um not immediately mm -hmm. um I would say when I was around 15 um I got to do um th there was this theater that was um I believe it was with the YMCA it was a while back ago it was like the John Beasley theater mm -hmm. They had this little talent show, um, and I, I joined. I did the talent show, and since then I was like, oh, I love performing. I love singing, and mm -hmm. I went on from there. And you know, I. What talent. was your talent? Um, it was singing. Uh -huh. I sang. I sang. Do you acapella. remember the piece? <laughs> um, it would lift every voice and sing, but uh -huh. I don't. I feel so bad because I haven't I haven't sang that song in a while, and oh, so okay. yeah. I have forgotten most of the words. And that's but all right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. very <laughs> cool. Very cool. So yeah. So when you got there to the John. Um, to the John Beasley Theater and stuff, and you saw that, oh, you know, man, I could really express myself. What was that like? Um, at first, I think that was like part of the, a lot of people now ask me if I ever get nervous, and I'm just like, no, <laughs> I don't get nervous because I feel like I have something to do, and uh -huh. I'm not gonna let anything get in the way of that, you know, uh -huh. including being nervous. I don't yeah. have time for it. Uh -huh. I know it's weird, but when I was 15, I was like, really nervous. Uh -huh. Like, I had never done anything, and you know, of course, I'm in that teenager, you know, scared of everyone being judgmental, you uh -huh. know, what is everyone gonna view, you know, think and view of me, uh -huh. and, and uh -huh. so I was really, really scared at uh -huh. first, and so uh -huh. I feel like that kind of had a place in me actually performing. I don't think I um, performed to my fullest potential, 
but it definitely gave me a sample of what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I feel like from then on, even out of that fear, it propelled me to be who I am today, I guess. Excellent, excellent. And, and I think that's what a lot of people face. They they find it hard to confront their fears because like you mentioned, they fear being judged by others and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they underestimate their potential and their capabilities because they put a lot of their power in other people's hands instead of retaining it and taking ownership to it. So do you mind performing us uh, for us a piece of um, uh, music using the ukulele? Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also sing in another language. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I sing in, it's called Ga. Uh -huh. It's from a West African country called Ghana. Yeah. Um, and it's from the Ga tribe, and that's where my whole entire family is pretty much from. She's and a good so man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so, you know, my mom was really diligent about teaching me the language and stuff mm -hmm. as a younger child, mm -hmm. uh, as well as with my father. And so mm -hmm. it's something that has just kind of always stuck with me. So, so you speak the language fluently? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. That's amazing. How do you say hello in Ghana? Um, tete. 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 It's te. Th th yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope our audience got it and stuff, you know? And then you? is there a response to it or um you could say in your juba which is um kinda like, yeah, I'm 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 good, I'm well, I'm doing well. Like your juba. In your juba. Your juba. Yeah, I'm probably even saying it wrong myself <laughs> just because I'm so westernized, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> they know what I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> it's the worst that matter. It's not how it comes to sound that it comes out. Definitely. But yeah, okay, very good. Go ahead. All right. La da 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 La da 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 Energy, 
Nisani maba wa ame such a great like meditation music you know it just transforms you and takes you to a high level of enlightenment you know? what comes to mind when you play this music and what were you singing about too um normally when i perform or i do any of my music i want to say like um I've, i have many written music but they're not for the ukulele or the djembe um they're for if i were to add other instruments so i never perform those but um I would say when I do play the ukulele in the MAs, I have about five to ten percent that's written. Everything else is done on spot, like the song that I just really? did. Yes. And so beforehand, I really don't know what I'm going to sing about. I kind of give myself maybe like a bar or two, like when it comes to measures of music, mm -hmm. to kind of get adjusted to what I'm playing and what I might sing about, what is in my heart. And that's where I always try to play from, is my heart. Mm -hmm. um, what I just sang about was what is in my heart, which is to help people. Mm -hmm. um, for someone that has fallen, I mean, you could take that in any way. Um, someone that doesn't, um, they've, they used to stand so tall in the sense of, um, they used to have direction. They used to know where they were going. They used to know what they wanted out of life, but now they've come to a point where they don't know any of that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to help them mm -hmm. um, in whatever way I can. Mm -hmm. um, someone that, um, I guess, it's, I guess it was just me talking about how I wanted to help people, mm -hmm. and that's what's in my heart, yeah. is to help others. Because many people's souls and aspirations have been broken down, you Definitely. know, by life, by family, by friends, just the mm -hmm. negativity that surrounds them, Definitely. and with the constant news that we hear around the world, it's just terrible what's going on. It, everything tends to be so demoralizing, nothing really uplifts, and you are there to be a messenger of music. As you mentioned, you know, you're using your music as a, not only as a form of expressing your soul's desires, but also trying to uplift others. And we need mm -hmm. more people like you in this world. And also Nebraska needs you. you know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we're so happy to have you here on the show. So he, let's do a little fun activity here. Okay. We we're gonna go ahead and find some fun facts about you. Okay. So tell us, what is something about you that few people know? Hmm, something about me that few people know. I would say, hmm, well, there's a couple people that know, and I, I don't know, whatever, I'm up and around, but I'm learning how to beatbox. Really? Yes. Beatbox? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I always do when no one asks me to and everyone's just like what are you doing and I'm like nothing and then people ask me I'm just like no I don't want to do it all right, yeah all okay right. but um And then there's like the prince up in spapun, but nuppins up in spapun. Prince up in spapun, but nuppins up in spapun. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> Do you rap on top of that too? You know, while I, you're beatboxing? <laughs> no, I mean, like, me and a friend back in the day, like, she used to, like, she was the beatboxing queen. Probably uh -huh. still is. Wow. But um, she would beatbox and I would rap, uh -huh. or I would attempt to beatbox for uh -huh. her, and then she would rap. And uh -huh. that's like, I don't know, but that's. I guess the only kind of like way that I do rap is just like someone else beatboxing or making a little beat and then uh. me rapping to it about something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as you're having fun, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So what is something um, that you're doing right now that is uh, used as an attempt to expand your mind, to challenge yourself? To challenge myself. Um, hmm. Well, there's... I definitely believe, like I was saying earlier, I definitely believe in helping people. And mm -hmm. I feel like with helping others, I, I need to be knowledgeable to some extent mm -hmm. with um, certain things, which comes to people. I love people. 
Um, I'm going to school, technically not at this moment because my quarter just ended, but I'm going to school for psychology and music. And so um, one day I want to become a musical therapist. I believe that music, well, creative arts therapist, but primarily a music therapist. I believe that music can do so much that people don't give it credit for. But um, I, I definitely believe um, that the way I can help people, not only physically with my hands, like um, um, homeless shelters or giving things to people that need it or, you know, doing things for people, like uh, helping them out with whatever they need. But I also believe that like through music, I can, you know, do so much to help them too. So the challenge that I see there is just having more of an understanding of my audiences that I, you know, come across mm -hmm. because not they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. It may be, you know, the same um, music that I might be doing, but it's not ever the same people. The people are constantly different. And so I guess it's like adapting to each people, like a d each audience that I see to kind of, I don't know what it is, but kind of getting a feel for the audience so that mm -hmm. whatever I do can be for them at that moment. And how do you, you know? adapt? Are you talking about in terms of ethnicity, the different ethnic groups that you encounter, or is it more, or what is it specifically? I feel like when you, it, you adapt to cater to that audience. When it comes to, I don't believe ethnicity plays a part in it at all. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being, I don't believe that you need to understand music to find it beautiful. Mm. Um, I believe um, when it comes to the people that I play for, it's more so I attack more of like the human struggles that we all face. Sometimes like reading from a crowd, there's a couple people that stand out that I can tell, oh my goodness, I don't know what it is, but I just feel some heartbrokenness within you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, I feel that you're struggling with something, you feel like a failure or something like that, or mm -hmm. you just have lost hope. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but that's what I'm getting from these people or mm -hmm. certain people within the audience. And I'm just trying to be better at picking up on that. So when I do my music, it's not, I mean, a fit, you know, not like a medicine that you take, but s at s just for that moment, it gives them relief. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking about that job that is driving them insane. They're not thinking about, you know, the pain of losing a loved one, but actually the joy of the life that they've lived. And, you know, they're not thinking about all these horrible things, but thinking about more so the positive and ways that they can be positive or, you know, achieve that state of positivity. And so that's what mm -hmm. I guess going back to the question we asked earlier is what I try to do. You know, I try to um, really pay attention to my audiences. Mm -hmm. That's more so the challenges that mm -hmm. um, I face in the music. Yeah, and I think the theme that we're getting here is empowering others, people who are broken, you know, uplifting them. And you had mentioned earlier that you lost your father at a young age, and so did I. So we have that in common, though it's a terrible thing, but it's something that bonds us. And do you think from having lost your father at a young age, um, you know, that sort of like propelled you to wanting to assist others? In addition to that, how were you able to overcome your father's loss? Um, a, a loving family. Um, and I want to say that I'm very lucky to have that because a lot of people, when they might lose the only person they've ever known in their life, mm -hmm. which is very, you know, mm -hmm. but um, I overcame that through um, just the beliefs that me and my family hold and um, my beliefs of what happened after you pass and my mother, she's such a strong rock for me that I, you know, have leaned on for so long and so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely can say that I was lucky to have that support system to mm -hmm. help me because I was so young, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I had a support anyways because I was Excellent. depending on someone as a child. So. Yeah, absolutely. And do you see that does the journey of not having a father get easier as you get older or does it become more of a challenge because he's missing out on the poignant moments of your life. I would say both, mm -hmm. but it all comes down to when I was saying these beliefs that me and my family hold, one of them is I believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, everything happens as an opportunity for us to learn and for us to grow. I don't know what his life might have been like if he was still alive. He could have suffered, and if that was going to happen, I wouldn't want it to be so. Um, he really strongly wanted me to be in the military, and that is something I don't want to do. I mean, I thank everyone that is you know, serving. Sorry, yeah. I really appreciate their service. I have a couple friends that are in the military, but I mean, as for me, this is something that I, I feel like I could better serve people, serve people with. Was he in the military? Music and stuff. No, he oh. was just a really big enthusiast for the military. <laughs> for the military. 
sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just I believe everything happens for a reason, and I, mm-hmm. you know, I believe that through his passing, I was able to become a stronger person. Mm-hmm. I didn't have, um, even though it was a crutch when I was younger, it wasn't a crutch as I got older. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to go places where I didn't think I could go and do things yeah. I didn't think I could do. Yes. And so. so could you go ahead and play for us another piece of music? Yes. Okay. Now, what is the song that you're going to play? Um, or I'm is not it just sure. drums. It's oh, yeah, you're not just, sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. But I will tell you at the end. All right. Um, that was basically it starts off as a story whenever I play my drum it's always a story but it starts off as um, me waking up in the morning and finding joy and me just wishing the same for everyone else that when they wake up Uh they they realize it's a new day it's a new it's just a new beginning new everything and Mm -hmm. so that they find that joy to propel them for the rest of their day week month life year (laughs) (laughs) excellent so we thank you so much Adam King for coming on the show we had such a wonderful time and stuff you know I had a wonderful time I hope you did too oh yeah definitely (laughs) yes and we thank you for tuning on the program here at the Eunice Malai show we look forward to seeing you next week if you believe you can achieve